We got a bucket load of Got a big one in there. Plenty of bait. What's up everybody, Ben Lampkins here with Angler's Itch Outdoors. In this video we're going to be talking everything cast nets. Uh, maybe you're in the market for one and you see all these different sizes and uh, weights and brands and you kind of don't know where to start. So I'm going to kind of go over all that, maybe help it, you narrow it down to uh, what net's going to fit you the best. Uh, so we're just going to kind of get to it. All right, everybody, so as you can see here, I've got a collection of different, all different cast nets. I got them anywhere from four foot up to 10 foot and different meshes and weights. Um, so I've played with a few different ones over the years and learned a lot from them. So we're gonna kind of go over some of that. Um, do you need this many cast nets? No, uh, I, I'm just a bit of a cast net junkie. I, en I enjoy getting out there and catching bait. You know, it's a form of fishing, so I, I enjoy it. Um, so you don't need this many nets, but we're going to kind of explain them, get it narrowed down to maybe one or two nets that would uh, work best for you and your situation. Um, so we're going to get these things inside and uh, get in the warmth, and I'll start uh, going over everything with you. All right, now that we're inside here where it's warm, we can start talking nets. I got my uh, fancy little dry erase board here. I'll just kind of go over some of the things we'll talk about here. We're going to go over the net components, the net size, how a net sinks, we'll talk uh, tape nets a little bit, weight, mesh size, mesh purpose, and what's best for you, and we'll talk maybe a few other things. So um, let's start with the components here. All right, so this is the basic components of your uh, cast net here. So this is gonna be your hand line, uh, you know, the line that you usually run your hand or wrist through. That's your hand line here. So that's gonna run down to your swivel. And then these are your braille lines, all that monofilament that runs through there. And this is the horn of the net. And this is your netting. And then you get down to, this is your lead line, and then your lead, and your weight. Alright, so now you have a basic understanding of the components of the net. Uh, we're going to kind of talk about the size of the net, uh, how these nets sink. But before I get into that, I just want to kind of go over a few things to kind of keep you out of trouble. Um, make sure you look into your local laws on uh, any regulations or restrictions on what size net you can use. Some of these states um, you can't use certain size nets or I think even some states you can't even have lead on your net. Uh, so I'd look into that. Um, I would definitely go with lead if you can uh, on a net but I, I understand if some states don't allow it then you kind of have to just work with what you got. And A few other things you got to kind of think about is the types of baits you get into on what you can keep for bait. Um, I know like in Missouri, uh, you're not allowed to keep bluegill over a certain size in a cast net. They have to be caught by rod and reel. Uh, so look into those things um, and then you gotta kinda watch it with any kind of invasive species you may catch in your net. Uh, so just kinda look into any of that. Be able to identify the baits you catch uh, so you're not transporting uh, something that's invasive uh, or um, you know the, anything that breaks any laws so you may want to just kind of look into that keep an eye out for those few things and you'll be on the up and up all right so the length of the net um, usually you can go I've got them from anywhere from uh, four foot to ten foot and they can go up from there uh, but that's usually the distance from your uh, lead line to the horn of it uh, so say a 10 foot net, uh, by the time it's fully opened, it'll be a 20, 20 foot across on that net. So, uh, that's how those sizes are determined on nets. Uh, so we'll just kind of get into our next subject here. Cause this kind of goes hand in hand with the size of the net you're going to go with. I'll kind of zoom in here on my fancy drawing here. Um, 
whenever you throw a net and it gets in the water, it's going to be opened up all the way. It's going to be fully opened. By the time it starts to sink, that net's going to start to close in on you. And uh, the deeper you go, the farther down you got to go, the more that net's going to continue to close in on you. Uh, so that's where these bigger nets are going to help out a lot. If you got a long distance to go, it's going to be obvious throwing the biggest net that you possibly can is going to get you the uh, most bait uh, on your throw. So, um, and another thing to think about, it's not necessarily always a depth thing. If your bait's scattered a lot or scattered out real bad, a bigger net's also going to help. Even in, in a little bit shallower water, if it's scattered, that bigger net's going to help grab some of those scattered baits a little better as well. So those are the two things that are going to term, determine your uh, net size. Uh, the, you know, how far down you got to go or how spread out those baits are. Um, and also how big these schools are. Sometimes you get in such big schools, you can throw pretty much any net down there. You're going to, you're going to get in on them. So we'll, we'll kind of go over that a little bit later. And uh, there's also the option of a tape net. We're going to talk about those a little bit. Um, so just kind of think about those things whenever you are going for a net. You got to think the depth you'll be going, how uh, thick are these schools, or how how uh, scattered are the baits. All right, so now we're going to talk tape nets a little bit. Um, as you can see here, I have one. This is my eight foot tape net. You can see she's got some miles on her. Uh, dirty old thing, but uh, this is actually the uh, net that I learned how to throw a cast net on and caught my first shad in it so uh, but anyway you can see tape nets usually got a tape just above that lead line there and what that's designed to do that's designed to keep your net open I'm gonna zoom in here on my drawing a little bit that's gonna keep your net open for longer as it sinks it's kind of designed for bait that's real deep down so your tape nets uh, as they sink, they're going to stay open longer. They're still going to close in on you, but just not at the rate as one without the, the tape will do. Uh, that way it's still kind of open more for you, that bait that's real deep down in there. You still can scoop some up. Uh, however, the downside to that of the tape net is that it does sink much slower than one without, but it does stay open longer. Um, that being said, from my experience with the tape net, uh, since we're talking about it, I've threw one a lot. That's the one I, I learned to throw on. Um, the uh, tape nets are, e for me, they seem to open easier. I don't know, something about when you go to throw them, um, the tape on them just seems to make it open up better for you. Because like I said, that's the one I learned on. And once I got it opening, and then I went to one without a t tape on it, it seemed to be a little harder to get open. And eventually I got the hang of it. But uh yeah, they seem to open up a little easier for you. Um, but the another thing I noticed with them uh, is when you're pulling them back up, there's so much more resistance with that tape on there. Like on these bigger tape nets, the smaller ones probably not big of an issue, but you know this is a, a pretty heavy, larger tape net. So when it's time to pull back up, it, it's it's pretty hard. You know, it's a lot of resistance with that tape on there, so it can really wear you out. Uh, obviously the goal is to get you know good enough at the bait that you can get them on your first throw but it's not always the case when I was learning this I was throwing it a lot and missing bait and having to drag that thing up uh, yeah that that tape net will wear you out and then it's usually if you got to go down deeper you're pulling it up even more uh, another thing I noticed about them uh, that tape would if you're on a real muddy bottom um, that tape will kind of grip that mud and bring a bunch of nasty mud up in your boat with you um so uh but it does definitely uh, stay open longer um only time i really after all the experience i've had with cast nets um the only benefit i really can see out of a tape net would be more so uh if the bait's deep in the winter time uh, uh just because that's when you always hear people say you gotta go deep in the winter which it's not necessarily true. I, I found them in, in shallower waters, but uh, say they are deep in the winter time. They also usually go deep. I, I think they go more in the. I find them more in the deep during the hot summer times than I do in the winter time. 
Uh, however, they do go d- deep during both seasons. So, um, but a tape net really seems to pay off if it's uh, in the uh, winter time and they're down deep. The reason being is because it's such a slower sinking net that uh, in the winter time that bait is moving a lot slower. Those schools of bait uh, because they're you know it's cold, they're lethargic. Um, you you know they don't move out of that out of the way of that net so fast. So that even though that net's sinking slower, uh, it, by the time it gets to the bait, they don't have time to get out from underneath it. So I found that the tape net works best if you're in a deep situation in the cold. Um, now when it warms up or it's hot out and they're down deep. Uh, that tape net, by the time it gets down to that bait, it, sh- it, it can get out from that net because it, it sinks so much slower that you're you're kind of missing out that opportunity. Just You're not getting down there fast enough. That bait's lively, um, very active, and it's just got to get out of the way on you. So um, in the summer times or warm weather when they're down deep, I found out it's better to go with a bigger net that sinks much faster, that isn't a tape net, that gets down there with with speed before those uh, bait fish get out of the way of that, that net. Um, so like, uh, that's what we're gonna kinda talk about a little bit is the weight of the net that's gonna play a part and the mesh is gonna both play a part in how fast your net gets down to that to that bait. So um, we'll uh, talk a little bit about that next. All right, so now we're going to talk about the weight of the net a little bit. Uh, nets usually come in uh, three-quarter pound per radius foot, one pound per radius foot, uh, one and a half pounds per radius foot. Uh, pretty much it's obvious. The heavier weight you got, the faster that ne- net's going to sink. So if you're in a situation where you got to get your net down fast, obviously a heavier weight's going to do that better for you. Um, so I have a couple of nets that are one and a half per radius foot. Uh, and I only throw them when I have to. Those uh, those nets are pretty heavy. You start getting eight, ten foot nets with that kind of weight on them, it it adds up. Those things will exhaust you throwing them and lugging them back in. So I only throw mine when I have to. Uh, you know, it just kind of depends on your situation. Uh, if, if I'm to the point where that's what I have to do, I'm gonna do it. But uh, if not, then I I won't throw it. it just just wears me out. So. Um, but that's pretty much it with the weights. That's all they really do for you is just kind of sink it, sink the net for you uh, a little bit better. But, uh, you know, it's a lot more weight you have to lug around, so you just got to kind of figure out uh, between three-quarter, one pound, and one and a half what might work best for you. So uh, I've got them all. Uh, just kind of depends on what situation I'm in. I prefer to throw as light as possible, but it's not always the case. Um, you're better off going heavier if you're not sure. You're better off going heavier than you are lighter just to be on the safe side uh, of that. So I'd rather have a net that's catching them, uh, even if it's wearing me out a little bit. Um, but as you kind of learn your your baits and where they're at and how deep and you got to go and how fast you got to sink that net, you may lighten that up a little bit over time, which is what I ended up doing. But, uh, but yeah, that's just pretty much uh, all that weight does for you. Now we're going to kind of talk about the mesh size a little bit. Uh, mesh size plays two parts. Mesh also determines how fast that net's going to sink. Larger mesh is going to uh, sink faster for you. Uh, the, the mesh, what that is, is you know the netting on there. That uh, uh, the mesh size usually is measured. So like a one-inch mesh is measured like so. Uh, some net companies measure across here. Some measure that way. You just kind of have to look into what size, but I think most of them go this way on that. So you know your higher mesh size is determined. You know that's gonna uh, definitely larger ones gotta sink sink a lot faster for you. And then uh, uh, the bait size, um, you know, larger mesh is gonna get you bigger baits, and it's gonna let out that smaller bait, so you're not having the hassle of dealing with smaller baits. Uh, there ain't no sense of pulling up a bunch of bait that you don't want and having to deal with that mess. Uh, so uh, you want to go as the largest mesh as possible that's still going to catch whatever size bait bait you're after. Uh, I kind of have a little chart here that kind of shows a little bit. Uh, they make smaller mesh than this, but uh, since we... Let me get it here. There 
go. Since we uh, go after catfish mostly, I want the bigger bait, so I just kind of got the bigger mesh sizes. But anyway, you can go from 3 8 half inch, 5 8 3 quarter, 1 inch. Uh, this is kind of the bait size, give or take, that you'll be catching in that sizes. So um, obviously the bigger mesh is going to get you those bigger baits. Uh, you can get up to 1 inch mullet nets, uh, you know, catch bigger bait. Um, but I, I really like that because I just don't like dealing with those those smaller baits when I don't want them. I do have smaller mesh nets for, for the times that I do need that smaller bait. You know, sometimes catfish want smaller baits in the winter or uh, if I'm going after stripers uh, and they're hitting them smaller thread, thread fin uh, shad, I'll use that smaller mesh for that. Uh, but I also have the larger for the, the bigger baits. I, I usually prefer that larger mesh. Um, you know, for me the idea, I, I most of my nets are five eighths and half inch. Uh, that's pretty much that. Five eighths is just right for, as a cat fisherman. Uh, still gets me that that middle range and larger bait that I want, and it lets out anything that really isn't even worth using um, for for the bait. So uh, it works out good for me. But it also depends on what size bait you have in your area. You know, so. Uh, uh, if you don't have the bigger bait, you have to work with what you got, you know, uh, then it, it is what it is. Just you have to go with the smaller mesh if you don't have that bigger bait. Uh, uh, sometimes they say match the hatch. Uh, you're in a situation where you, you only have a uh, smaller bait to work with. Uh, you can still catch them on that uh, uh, size bait. So, uh, yep, that's that's how the mesh works. It, it sinks it faster for you or it determines how fast it sinks I should say and it determines what size baits you're going to get into uh, and you don't you want to make sure that you're not really gilling the bait that you want uh, that's where they're you know the nets get trapped around their gills that's that's going to kill off your bait so you want to also make sure your mesh size is more so cradling or scooping up the bait that you want and not gilling that bait so it stays you know lively and healthy for you for for uh, whenever you plan on using it so that's the uh, mesh talk and then uh, we'll kind of go on from there about uh, what I think is has been the best bit net for me so far so uh, we'll get into that next all right so with all that net talk you might be wondering so which is the best net uh, I uh, from my experience of messing with all these different nets for What's best for me may not be best for you, but um, I'll kind of tell you what I, I would prefer with my situation. Um, in the beginning, I needed a big 10-foot net uh, with uh, a lot of weight to it and a larger mesh. Uh, when I first started getting into this, I was you know just going to places that didn't, didn't have the amount of baits that I would have liked. Um, the more I kind of explored, I finally got <clears throat> to the point where I can go to this uh, area, the bait's always thick, um, I can always throw uh, you know, a smaller net on them and fill that net up and have way more bait than I need and it's usually always like that. Uh, that's kind of the point you want to get to, uh, obviously, but it, it's not always easy. Um, if you just don't have the bait in your area, you just don't have it, uh, you're, you're going to want to definitely uh, stick with the uh, net that's uh, going to help you out with getting that bait. So uh, after discovering um, uh, this area with all the, the th nice thick clouds of bait everywhere, uh, my idea net, and I don't even have one yet, because now that I've messed with all these nets, I have an idea which one to get next. And I think that will be my, my pretty much go-to net that I may not even really mess with these other ones anymore after I get that. As I'm thinking for me a perfect net would be a seven foot net, five eighth inch mesh with uh, I would say one pound per radius foot uh, for for my situation um, and it, it, it's a good good size it still kind of uh, gets a decent amount of bait but it's easy to handle easy to stretch out and work uh, easy to throw it doesn't exhaust you um, but if you're not in that that situation uh, you find the bait to be a little harder to come by or it, it's deeper or you're just not sure, your best bets always go big as possible, uh, heavy as possible. So um, if your state allows you to go, you know, 
eight to ten foot net or or, or more maybe um, you, you're gonna want to stick with that bigger bigger net uh, at least until you you get the hang of of how your your bait situation is going to be if you already know you've got a lot of bait you've been out in the boats before and you just see them uh huge schools of bait all around all the time then uh you'd probably be fine with a seven footer five eighth inch mesh with the one pound weight as well uh, still gets you the right size bait has enough weight to get down there but it's not a lot to work with it doesn't wear you out uh, uh so you know if you're in that case you just know you got the bait in the area then uh there's no sense of wearing yourself out trying a giant net, uh, which, you know, you will have to be able to throw these nets consistently. So being able to throw bigger nets, you know, it's just good. If you're not you're new to it, you just got to practice and get the hang of it. Uh, eventually, uh, throwing those bigger nets will definitely pay off if you need them. Um, so if it was to be down to one net, that would be it. Uh, but ideally, having two nets would be, be a, a good situation. You'd have your... Uh, you know, a little bit bigger net, uh, heavier net with a little bit bigger mesh, and then it'd be nice to have like a shallow uh, net for when they're shallow with maybe a little bit smaller mesh for the, the smaller baits. Uh, that way you you, ha you have that option. Um, you don't even, maybe even a six footer since they're shallow, you don't need it as big, a uh, little bit smaller to work with, a little bit lighter, uh, and you're, you're throwing on them in that shallow water, you can get on, you know, get on them quicker that way, you don't need it to to sink so fast or be such a large net so having two nets would be idea um, but you know if you're going down if you're down to one and you're just not sure uh, always going bigger and heavier is your best bet but you just just gonna have to be uh, capable of throwing that net uh, so that's kind of my opinion on uh, the perfect size uh, for me and then maybe kind of gives you an idea what might be best for you uh, so, um, and then that's gonna kind of bring up one other thing I want to talk about is uh, uh, kind of the different brands. Uh, I've I've had a few different ones. Uh, these nets can be pretty expensive. Uh, that's kind of the downside of it. I've got some that were pretty expensive, and I've got, had some that were really cheap, uh, and uh, some in the middle. Um, so, uh, here's a few nets here. Some uh, like. Here's a Phytec Fi one uh, that I've used. It says Phytec somewhere on there. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's got their little logo there. These are really good nets. Um, they're high quality, but they are not, they're a little bit more expensive side. Uh, and then there's... Um, uh, you've probably seen these a lot. You'll see these at like Bass Pro and stuff. Uh, I know these Phytech, sometimes you have to order them online. Not everybody carries them. Uh, some places do. It just kind of depends on what your stores carry. But if not, you have to get them online. These are pretty popular. You see them uh, Bass Pro, sometimes Walmart, Academy Sports. These these are another pretty good brand. They're not as expensive as the Phytech. Uh, but they uh, for the price, they're a really good net. Um, and they're, they're a Bats brand. Uh, they've been great for me. Um, and they're a little bit... A little bit on the cheaper side. Uh, Betts also makes a little bit higher end net as well. Uh, this one I had to get online. Uh, they're super pro. Uh, this is my, I think this was my 10 foot net, one and a half pound, five eighth inch. Uh, this was 1.4 pound per foot. Uh, so they, they do make a higher end one. Um, and then I don't have uh, some of the cheaper brand containers. I don't know what I did with those, but. Uh, uh, I definitely went the cheap route. Uh, you don't have to go expensive, uh, but I did notice a difference between uh, the, the expensive one and the mid-range ones were pretty, pretty similar, pretty close um, in quality. But when you went cheap, that's when I really noticed the the difference uh, on them cheaper nets. Uh, and, and you still may be fine with a cheaper net. It just kind of depends. Uh, what I notice is those cheaper nets tear so much easier. Uh, those mid-range ones kind of held up much better than the, the more expensive ones really held up. Uh, so I found it like them cheap ones, I was just tearing them up and they're kind of being a little more expensive in the long run, having to buy a new net. They're beyond repair, on, uh, especially if you're like uh, throwing from the bank. You know, that's what I was using them for. 
uh, you, you got more of a risk because you're having to throw like shad will go up on the rocks or riprap and you're having to throw on that or uh, just from the bank you're getting more around snags and things that uh, may tear that net so um, if that's your situation you're going to want to at least go mid-grade or higher so it, it kind of holds up I've, I've been hung up with some of these nicer nets and i can definitely tell the difference when i go to pull it loose uh, it either doesn't tear or just leaves a small enough tear to where i can repair it um, and i'm not buying another net over it uh, so that's a big difference i know and, and they have seem to have heavier braille lines uh, that keep from snapping as easily <clears throat> um, on them cheaper ones of just a, uh, a smaller diameter uh, braille line that just just broke a lot easier on them um, so that was kind of what i noticed with the difference on them but if you find it you know you're in areas you don't ever really get snagged up much you'd probably be fine with a cheap cheap net uh, at least giving it a try uh, but if you want something that's going to last uh, many years and you don't have to worry so much i'd go mid or higher higher up um, that being said obviously you can get snagged bad enough on any of these and it'll they'll tear i've completely lost uh some of these expensive nets just by it uh, uh being inexperienced and uh uh, sometimes thinking uh, I was seeing bait down there on the 2D sonar and end up being brushed and then that net just completely tangles up on on uh, something down there and there's just no way of getting it back. Uh, so I, that's where you just got to really kind of get honed in on your electronics, which I eventually did. And uh, uh, now that I can get on, I can I hardly ever get snagged up. Uh, I, I get so much bait on, on one throw. Uh, that's really where you want to get to. Uh, and really just kind of uh, learning the baits and and uh, being consistent with things and uh, uh, learning these uh, nets. All right, guys and girls, well, there you have it. Uh, hopefully uh, you learned something from this video. I uh, went ahead and got my nets all put up back up out in the garage here. Um, for the next time I, I plan a trip to go on out, hopefully I'll be able to start getting more fishing trips in here soon uh, between having colds and uh, working and stuff. I haven't had a chance to get out fishing more, so hopefully I can do that for you soon um, and get on some of these fish. Uh, so uh, if you like these videos, uh, hit that like button, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>